Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Five Minutes in GI, a show where we try to answer the most frequently asked questions about gastrointestinal disorders in just under five minutes. I'm your host, Alyssa Sutton, and I'm the program coordinator at the International Foundation for Gastrointestinal Disorders, otherwise known as IFFGD. Today, I am happy to welcome Dr. Dari Shasavari. Dr. Shasavari is one of IFFGD's junior academicians, and he is currently completing his final GI fellowship year at Augusta University as the chief GI fellow. Dr. Shasavari's career interests include GI motility as well as neurogastroenterology. Once he has completed his GI fellowship, he'll be joining Emory University in Atlanta as a faculty member. Dr. Shasavari, thank you so much for joining us here today. Of course, it's a pleasure, Lisa. Thanks for having me. Of course, absolutely. So today we are going to answer the question, what is the difference between gastroesophageal reflux disease and laryngeal pharyngeal reflux? So basically gastroesophageal reflux, or uh, you know, short form of it known as GERD, and, and, and laryngopharyngeal reflux, which is also uh, the short form is LPR, there are two different, uh, essentially different types of acid reflux. Which is essentially the, a condition that where the acid, the, the stomach acid flows back into the esophagus or, or the food pipe. Um, the main difference between the two, GERD and LPR, is how high the acid reaches in your throat, basically how high it comes up. Uh, GERD is the more common one. It is the more common type of the acid reflux. It, it affects the, the, the lower part of the esophagus and, you know, the symptoms uh, are typically heartburn, chest pain. Uh, a sour taste in the mouth. Um, it also can damage uh, the, the the lower part of the esophagus uh, over time and increases the the risk of uh, esophageal cancer. And that's that's kind of why it's important that in patients with long-standing GERD to to do endoscopy uh, to make sure that this does not develop. The LPR, on the other hand, uh, the laryngopharyngeal reflux is the the less common type of the reflux. It affects uh, the mainly the upper part of the esophagus as well as uh, the larynx, the, the voice box, and the pharynx, which is the throat. Um, the symptoms associated with LPR um, mostly include uh, things like hoarseness, uh, chronic cough, sore throat, or uh, like feeling something is stuck in, in the throat. And it, it can damage uh, the, the, the vocal cords. And some studies have shown that it may also increase the risk of, uh, um, of throat cancer. Both of these conditions, the, the, the GERD and LPR, they're, they're, as I mentioned before, they're a result of this, this uh, esophageal sphincter function. Now, sphincters are round muscles at the bottom of the esophagus and at the, high, uh, at the, the, the upper part of the esophagus that uh, their, their job is to protect the esophagus against acid reflux. And when there's any compromise in these, uh, you know, the acid can come up and, and cause the symptoms. And, uh, some of the factors that can actually uh, trigger these acid uh, reflux or, or LPR include things like uh, obesity, uh, pregnancy, um, other factors like smoking, alcohol, certain type of food, spicy food, um, uh, or, or certain medication. And the treatment between the two conditions is very similar. Um, uh, first and foremost, the most important uh, treatment for both conditions is lifestyle changes. And uh, the, those things include, uh, you know, kind of uh, identifying what you, what the kind of, kind of foods uh, are trigger foods, and they, they worsen the symptoms and avoiding those type of food. Uh, eat, um, uh, things like uh, um, uh, weight loss if, if uh, the patient's overweight, uh, smoking, um, obviously quitting smoking helps that way. Elevating the, the head of the bed when uh, when the patients are sleeping and eating smaller meals. There are medications, there are a number of medications that, that help with the symptoms as well, uh, including antacids, over the counter antacids, uh, uh, other classes of medication called H2 blockers, um, or, or the more uh, you know, uh, famously known proton pump inhibitors, things like omeprazole, pantoprazole, that these things they can neutralize and reduce the, uh, or, or you know, block the acid production, so uh, it, you know, to, to help with the symptoms. And, and finally, in patients who are not responding to medical therapy, surgery is is um, is a solution for these uh, patients. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Shasavari. I really liked that explanation, and I really appreciate the way that you not only talked about the triggers, but you also talked about some of the treatment options that patients can speak with their physicians about. 
I know that one of the biggest misconceptions is the difference between GERD and LPR. So I really think that explanation was very helpful to a lot of people. Sure. If you are a patient that is struggling with GERD or with LPR and you are trying to look into some diet changes, remember that it's important to discuss any dietary modifications with your healthcare provider, such as a registered GI dietitian. They can help you assess your individual circumstances while also helping ensure that nutritional needs are being met through a balanced diet and healthy eating habits. You can always check out IFFGD's complimentary dietitian listing by using the QR code above. You can also find out more information related to diet and GERD by visiting our website at www.aboutgerd.org. That's all the time that we have for today. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And as always, if you have a question after watching today's video, please feel free to leave a comment below or email us directly at IFFGD at IFFGD.org. And we'll do our best to answer your question in another episode of 5 Minutes in GI.